All right, guys, let's show you where the integrated rate laws come from for, in this case, a zero order reaction. A zero order reaction means that the exponent on the concentration in the rate law is zero, i.e., the rate does not depend on the concentration at all. It is a constant rate, and that amount that it is constant is k. In order to figure out the integrated rate law, i.e., how the concentrations change with time, we need to do a little bit of integration. So get your calculus crayons out. The rate is usually described as the decrease in the concentration of a reactant A over time. And again, that is K. I'm simply replacing rate with this expression. Now, here comes the awesome bit. I'm going to separate these into two, I believe they're called differentials. I'm going to move my negative to the other side, and I'm going to move my dt to the other side. dt is kind of like a delta t or the delta x of a slope. You can think of it a lot of ways, but I prefer to just think of it as I have a dt on bottom here. I'm going to multiply it on the other side. Now the reason that's important is because I'm going to do an integration on both sides. Integrate the left side and integrate the right side. So, how do we integrate the left side? Well, we're going to integrate with respect to the concentrations and the times. So this here, uh, this is my differential, this is my integral. There's nothing here, which means what I've integrated is simply a constant. That constant in this case is the concentration at time t minus the concentration at time 0. On this side, negative k is a constant, and I have whatever time I've done it at, and 0. Now, this is not always how it works. You have to do some kind of integration, and the more complicated the function that you're integrating, the more complicated these turn out to be. Check out my videos about first and second order reactions to see how that happens. But with a zero order reaction, this integral is simply a constant. And then over time, it's the concentration at any time t minus the initial concentration. Simplifying this side, I get minus kt. And if I was to solve for my a of t, I get that my concentration at any time t is my initial concentration minus kt. So if I'm given my initial concentration, my rate constant, and the amount of time that goes by, and the fact that it's a zero order reaction, I can get my concentration at that time t. The last thing I want to point out is that this is a line. If you graph this on your y, and you make x, uh, sorry, you make time your x, you'll get a straight line with a slope of negative k and a y-intercept at your initial concentration. Let me do a little sketch of that for you, just so we don't get it confused or twisted. This is your, this is your concentration axis. This is your time axis. Your y-intercept is up here at your initial concentration, and you have a slope of negative k. This is what the concentration versus time graph looks like for a zero order reaction. And it all came from this rate expression, which you're certainly familiar with, integrating it with respect to time. And here we are. How about that? Again, it gets more complicated for first and second order reactions, so watch those videos too. Best of luck.